As I concluded my message to give my invitation for people to begin a relationship with God, I looked over to the side, and there were the musicians. They were all huddled together because they knew it was going down. They were all huddled together, and they're praying, Oh, God, oh, God, please don't let him kill Jason. I look over, and there's my wife. She's over there in the other corner. She's praying, Oh, God, please don't let him kill Jason. Now, I'm the man of God, the man of God with power and might. What am I doing? What am I doing? I'm saying, Oh, God, please don't let him kill me. Usher stands up, he walks to the back, he looks these five guys down the barrel. He says, you know, you've brought drugs and delinquency, organized crime into this neighborhood, and my brother's dying in the gutter because of the stuff that you brought into my community. He said, if you had any sense whatsoever, you would stop this nonsense, you'd listen to what this guy's saying on the platform, you'd begin a relationship with God that would set you free. And you'd experience freedom like you could never imagine. You want power? God shows real power, friend. He says, I'd like to pray for you. Do you have a problem with that? These five guys said, no. And as, as he started to pray, as only Hispanics can pray, Padre, manda tu espíritu. Father, send your spirit. And the power of God began to ascend. The presence of God began to ascend, descend upon that group of five people. And then he stopped about halfway through. He said, you know, I believe that if we just bow our hearts before the Lord and we ask him to be Lord of our lives, that he'll transform us and we'll leave this place free. Would you like to do that? And these five guys made the decision. And all of a sudden, I began to witness the miracle of miracles. As they began to pray, I was standing from a well-protected place on the platform, and I could look out, and I could see these five guys on their knees asking the Lord into their lives. And they got up with tears in their eyes, and they came down to the front, and they were crying, and they said, Oh, Jason, oh, Jason, we just wanted to ask for forgiveness because we were going to kill you afterwards, but now you don't have to worry about that. And I said, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Four days later, I received a phone call. And the other end of the phone was a guy. His name was John. He said, is this Jason Friend? I said, yes. He said, this is John. I was the guy who was going to kill you after the sermon. You remember me? I said, I will never forget you for the rest of my life. <laughs> he said, God is so good. He's been doing something revolutionary in my life. Hold on a second. Carlos wants to talk to you. Carlos gets on the phone. You remember me? I said, I won't forget you either. <laughs> God is so good. He's been doing something tremendous in my life. Hang on a second. Roberto wants to say hi to you. Talk to all five guys. Last one to get on the line was a young man by the name of Andre. All five of these guys had left their organized crime behind. And when they left, they began to join local churches in this day each and every one of them are involved in ministry. The gang activity has never been the same in that neighborhood ever since. I got the email from Andre 15 years after the fact. Transformational power of God working in the life of the individual. And why does he do it, friend? He does it. Why does he stand between the living and the dead? He does it because he has a why. Jesus has a why. And you know who that why is? You. You are God's why. He loves you. You are the apple of his eye. There is nothing... There is no barrier. There's no obstacle that could ever prevent God from trying to reach you because you are his why. He loves you. And whatever it is that you may face, whatever difficulty that you may be trying to overcome, what is it that we all want? We all want to be happy. We all want to be healthy. We all want to be reasonably prosperous. Some of us want to be unreasonably prosperous. We all want to have healthy family relationships, decent friendships. We all want to have hope and peace and peace of mind. I can tell you the Savior understands. And he reaches out to pull people from death to bring them back to life. Take his hand this morning, friend. It will be the wisest decision that you ever make. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for your presence.
And I ask God that you would do something wonderful this morning. Help us, Lord, to understand that the why is bigger than any excuse in your mind. And help us to understand that every one does count because your why is bigger than any excuse. So I pray for my friends across this wonderful sanctuary and over the television airwaves, anyone who is facing that difficult issue, that trial, who desires to make a breakthrough this year, I pray that the power of God would meet them, grab their hand and pull them from death and bring them back to life. As I continue to pray, friend, I'm not going to ask you to stand or come down to the front, but if you're facing that difficult challenge this morning, I want to invite you to slip up your hand as a gesture before the Lord and saying, God, I am ready to take your hand. I'm ready to overcome. Slip up that hand as I continue to pray. Father, I thank you for each and every hand that is raised this morning. I pray that you would take these hands and lead them from death back to life. I pray, Lord, that you would break through and that each and every one of us would experience your power, your might, your goodness, your grace, your hope. And upon this church and upon every voice, upon this church and upon every ear that hears my voice and every eye that watches this television program, I speak the blessings of God. I speak his goodness. I speak his peace. I speak his provision upon your life, my friend. In Jesus' mighty name, and all God's people said, amen. amen and amen. Thank you, and God bless you. Did you